Welcome back to SAFC Live. It's finished 1-0 to Sunderland. And it's pretty hard to watch that in the second half, Danny, from a Sunderland supporter point of view. But they got the job done. And I had a conversation with a couple of fans on the way down. Patterson didn't really have to make any saves, did he? No, I think, in, uh, just looking at the stats there, I think he said one shot on, on target from there. And I'm struggling to remember which one it was, actually. I can't remember too many in the second half, as you say. Yes, they probably in that second half, they had 78% of the ball forced us back, you could hear our crowd getting a little bit edgy, a little bit restless, but they didn't really work Anthony Patterson, did they? Um, so yeah, from that side of it, delighted for the lads at the back, back to clean sheets. Uh, Chris Meppham coming in for his debut, as we said there, thought he was excellent at the back there, alongside Luke O'Nine. Um, and yeah, obviously Chris Rigg with a, with a wonder goal to, to take the three points. Yeah, there was a different feeling about Sunderland this afternoon, Danny, particularly compared to that Plymouth game. Uh, last time out as well certainly in possession as well you felt Sunderland were, were dangerous didn't you yeah I, th I think in the first half I think middles were started the better early on sort of controlled it um, then we come into it had a good 20 minutes or so looked the threat as you see on the counter attack and also the goal come from that as well I think obviously look in the highlights in a minute but sort of broke free in the middle of the park there remain picks up possession we work out to the right and then we get the shot away and obviously Chris Rigg does the rest uh, but I thought that was going to be the case today. You know, Michael Carrick's side like to have possession, try and dominate whether they're at home or away. Um, and you have to be patient. I know Sunderland fans won't want to come and stay in the light and see us having 35, 40% of the ball too often. But when we when we do get the ball, it's what we're going to do with it. And we've got players, as I said before the game, the likes of Romain. Again, I thought he was excellent. He's constantly picks the ball up. First thought is to drive at his fullback, Luke Aylin. Uh, whoever he's up against, he wants to get forward, drive at the ball. Well, actually, I was going to say there's a couple of players who I thought maybe had quiet first halves actually really stepped up in the second half. I'm thinking about the long, long, along the lines of Dennis Serkin. He had a great second half as well. Job really kicked on as well in yeah. the second half. You know, you were saying that he was really impressive for you this afternoon. Uh, Mayenda, he didn't get a goal or any real clear cut yeah. opportunities but it's a hard shift that isn't it yeah you know it's hard because fans fans will look at it as well and i think judging naturally judge a striker on getting opportunities and that a lot will be going home in the cars now saying well oh what did he really do in that second half but when you're watching it and you're watching him and it's hard at times when you're out of possession and the amount of say doggies in, in football in terms of what he's having to do between the center backs 20 30 yards constantly and then he was dropping deep and you could see in that last 15 minutes you said it was a little bit uneasy in the second half watching it because we're, we're in our final third and he's 10 yards on the edge of our box. And you said a couple of times, well, if we if we manage to steal the ball here now, we've got you know three quarters of a pitch to run into with possession. Yeah. Didn't quite happen like that. And I was thinking maybe, is he going to freshen it up, just bring Roos in on last 10 minutes, give him a breather. Uh, but he stayed out there. You know, he, he almost won a penalty, as you said there, with that one good feat. Matt Clark brought him down edge of the box. Um, but yeah, he didn't have too many opportunities to go on, but it's going to be games like that. So you have to put in a shift for the team. And he'll, get, he'll be in there, he'll be frustrated that he hasn't had an opportunity or scored today, but he can be pleased with the shift he's put in for the team. Other shifts as well. Patrick Roberts, yeah. heavily involved in today's game. Chris Rigg, of course, we, we'll, we'll get on to him, I'm sure. Trey Hume as well. Chris Meppham, yeah. completely slotted in there. Yeah. No, I mean, if we, we can go through the whole team, and especially when you're looking at uh, a Trey Hume, picked up a yellow card early on, and we know how if Trey likes to try and dominate eight minutes. Minute, yeah, yeah, so he's playing a lot of the game there on a yellow card. And you're thinking he isn't going to pull out of a challenge if there's a ball there to be won. He's still going to go in and win it like he's not on the yellow card. But thankfully, that didn't happen. You know, obviously, he's come out of it unscathed just with that yellow card. Um, but yeah, Patrick, again, busy, bright, nightmare for fullbacks. He wants to go. You know, he wants to go inside, but stopping it's another thing. You know, he's, well, he's only about five foot three to start <laughs> with, and he's close to the ground. He moves well with the ball, doesn't he? Uh, and always finds his way into the box. And we thought he'd almost found that far corner with a great strike as well. Um, so on the balance of play, yes, possession-wise, Middlesbrough have, have dominated 64%, I think they had. But opportunities, they had that great one with uh, Tommy Conway, should have put it away early on. Matt Clark with a header as well. But other than that, they haven't really carved too much open in, in open play, really. So Michael Carrick will be disappointed with that. We've said it before, where we were last season, I think we were averaging around 65%, but we weren't doing enough with it. Now you'd swap that for having 40 45% carving teams open on the counter-attack and that's what we're doing at this moment in time. Yeah, we had some shots on target as well along yeah. the way as well and we were in, it was a funny one because uh, it, you know, in hindsight we, we enjoyed the game, didn't we? Because yeah. it was one of those where if you concede late, you know, you're walking away from the stadium thinking oh, how do we let that go? But it was quite enjoyable, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I really enjoyed the first half as well. Both teams trying to get the ball always mirroring each other in a way where when you're getting on it, 
trying to get a foothold in the game, control the game when you've got the ball and work it through the through the thirds really. Um, and Middlesbrough, I'd say, started the game well, shaded it. We come into it, had a spell. And even in the second half, we had a good spell as well, I thought. Should we look back through the yeah, highlights while we're talking about the game? We'll go through it as then well we can we're on maybe it. pick out some moments yeah. that we may have forgotten about. We're just going to watch our monitor here on pitch side. Yeah. And then, um, I think, as I Jones has said, uh, he went off, was it 60 odd minutes, I think, there. And he'd been disappointed. He, he was there. He had a few openings in the first half, down the right hand side. That one there, he actually does pick out a good ball for Tommy Conway, and he's, he's got to put that away. Simple as that. It's a worst case, hit the target, puts it over the crossbar. Meander, see, we see what he's got in his locker. You know, he's sharp. If you give him space, we just didn't see enough of it today. Um, I think that one there, he goes past two defenders like they weren't there. Just couldn't quite get the strike away, could he? Um, and then Middlesbrough, yeah, you see. I think from their point of view, and just chatting to, I think it was a Middlesbrough fan on the way down, he says, oh, that's, that sums us up, really. We have a lot of possession, but we, we don't do anything with it. We're, mm. we're all right getting into they the final. They want to score the perfect the, goal. Perfect goal, yeah. I think, I think the left-back as well, Borges, late on as well, he received it. He, he turned a couple of crosses down, you know, on his left foot. You've tried to work through us. It hasn't quite worked. Mix it up. Put a ball in the box, you know, try and get a ball in behind the back line. It didn't do it enough, Middles, but didn't mix it up enough. Here's the goal now. So here's the loose ball. Remains onto it, driving across the pitch. Feeds it out to Patrick. Patrick 1v1, that's where you want to see Patrick Roberts. That's what you work on in training. Pack at the assist there. Yeah, it comes inside. He gets the strike away. It's certainly not a pass by any stretch. I think, do you know what? I think he's aware of the man coming in, so then it sort of takes his eye. doesn't get the strike clean. Yeah. But look how sharp Chris is onto that. Such an amazing finish. I see it from Such this angle now. Is it, no, not this angle. The one from behind the goal where Chris could have gone down, really. But he doesn't want to. It's not his thought process. I want to stay on my feet. And I've got, look at that there. What a finish that is. You, know, you can watch it all day. 17-year-olds there, well, not even 17, even experienced players there naturally would put a foot on the ball and turn on it, and then sometimes the opportunity might the go pass, away because, yeah. you know, the players could get back on the line, but to have the confidence and the, and the technical ability just to do that on his, on his weaker right foot as well, fantastic finish. It's looking through some opportunities here for Middlesbrough. This area of the pitch, this, this kind of... Yeah third here the which they find themselves in they, they're just passing it left and right yeah, yeah square square looking for the open. I get that sometimes then and then looking for almost as you say that perfect killer pass and it just didn't come about really for them today they had a few first off where they almost threaded it in uh, it didn't quite come off as well uh, right on half time wasn't it Lati Lath had that one as well which he lobbed over the crossbar they, they ended up changing their entire front line front line as well yeah yeah that's that's it isn't it really you got options on the bench and as you say, this is it now, this is the one. So we've had the shout for the penalty. Oh, no, it's not, sorry, it's not that one yet, is it? We'll get onto that. It's just coming up in a, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, this is Isaiah Jones, isn't it? Little deflection from Dennis up onto the, uh, onto the roof of the net. Um, but, yeah, we'll have a look at this one now, the shout for the, for the penalty, I think it is, at the other end of the pitch. Not just yet, Danny. We're still going through some, a couple of some half here. chances for Middlesbrough they did get into that position a few times yeah. in the first half we didn't see so them in the second half do that you said front line but there's, there's no movement in the no. box for them and here it is now is it eventually getting onto the, into the box now Mundell seeing that you know we've seen him already with his couple of goals Burnley and the one last week as well getting into that area chops back looks for that far side netting doesn't he but he does like to go on the outside as well so he's got that doubt in the yeah. defender's yeah. mind yeah that's what you want to see when you've got a winger playing on the opposite side to his foot yeah, it's all well and good. He wants to come inside, but he's got to show it to the opposition that he wants to go on the outside. And well, here he goes now, driving in. <laughs> How many people were sat around us looking at us because they know we've got the monitor? Say, is it a penalty? I don't think it is. We, I think we both agree we don't think there's enough in it. We can't see any contact really with the feet, and there's not enough of a, a shove in the back really. And then while that shout's going on, Middlesbrough counter attacking. Well, it's a good job that didn't go in because yeah, I don't think the referee got out of here alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, Simon Hooper. Um, <laughs> And this Patrick is this is one yeah this is that strike isn't it just after half time on from where we were up on the, the gantry we thought that was finding the far side net and I think Diang did as well the way he's getting across well I'm not sure he's getting there is he if that's on target but no he's good again Patrick driving forward constantly like remain on the other side Mepham there involved again a real good performance from Chris Mepham this afternoon Job worked hard all afternoon he's someone you'd like to pull yeah, out yeah no, well again we'll get on to man of the match and it's good that we're talking about there's a few candidates in there as well um, but I just thought he covered every blade of grass not just driving forward he looks like full of energy you know towards the end of the game there you see him still got a yard or so in the tank and hard that one uh, for him yeah there. difficult yeah we're trying to work it well and he knows as soon as he receives that I've got to shift it quick and try and try and fire it into that far corner Um yeah, that was the one, wasn't it? He actually works the opening quite well here on this one and just drops the shoulder. Uh, Morris, I think it is, isn't it? And then just, instead of just inside of the boot there, find it at the far corner, cuts across it and slices it. What about this one? Far post. 
may end. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, Mundell, sorry, when Decent he strikes strike. the Yeah, post. you thought Patrick was going to step up, didn't you, and find that far corner, but it's, it's Romain who reverses it, and uh, unfortunately, the keeper's beat there. And, uh, it's another shot back off the post. No, I don't think that's a penalty. I think there's not enough. There's a little bit in the back, but Patrick goes down, I think, too easy. Looking for it. There's that strike again, isn't it? There, see. Keeper again. The outside of the post, post comes there. to his rescue. Main. And that would have just given us that little cushion to relax and Dennis put a showboat in there on the turn. Um, but yeah, fantastic, wasn't it? And then a few changes for ourselves as well. Dan Ballard coming on, Isidore towards the end of the game as well. And uh, just to see the game through, really. So delighted for the lads. Back to, I say, clean sheet again. Um, and then we've managed to obviously stay well at the other end of the pitch. So all things yeah. are rosy again. Uh, yes, it is. And Sunderland are top of the league. Let's have a look at the other scores before we uh, get underway with the 3 p.m.s this afternoon. What time are we on now? Oh, ten minutes until the rest of the games get underway. Last night, Stoke City were beaten at home by Hull City. Norwich won 4-1 against Watford. Now, Sunderland travelled to Vicarage Road next. Queen's Park Rangers won. Millwall won. And you know all about our game. So let's have a look at the league as it stands. Sunderland are top of the league. West Brom, they go down to... Well, they're at home against Wayne Rooney's Plymouth, Plymouth yeah. this afternoon. So keep an eye on that one. Um, because if, 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 if West Brom drop points, Sunderland will remain top of the league. And it looks healthy, doesn't it? You know, played six... Only lost one, Danny. Five yeah. wins. Well, we always say don't put the table up or look into Till it too early. But when you sat yeah. there, you've got to put it up, haven't you? Yeah. Of course you do. The lads will do that as well. Um, fantastic start, as you said. That blip aside last week, really. Yeah. Lads have been excellent, haven't they? Um, good competition in the squad as well. Now we see options coming off the bench as well. Um, difficult. It's difficult for them to change it. Even looking up there, we're thinking, who can you change it now? And you're looking around the pitch. I'm thinking, well, who's going to disappointed? Obviously, Patrick come off for Isidore. I'm thinking top end of the pitch. It may be freshening it up, but. No, it's good. It's good competition in the squad, and that's what you need. Let's have a look at some of the hashtags that are flying around. I know lots of people like to get in touch and tell us where they're watching, but we've only got time for this one from Charlotte. Who was your man of the match this afternoon? You've touched upon it. Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, Sky give it to, to Chris Rigg. I, I wouldn't argue it, obviously, for his goal alone, really. Um, but I, I went for Job. I just thought his energy today, getting around the pitch, you know, working both halves. Naturally, in the shape we set up him, he's an eight, so you're expecting him to, to you know, work forward and get himself in the box. But the shift he puts in, helping the lads out behind him as well, is fantastic. Um, you know, getting in behind the centre halves as well for the opposition. So I thought he put a real shift in this afternoon. And listen, you could Chris Meppham debut clean sheet, right place at the right time throughout the game really. Um, so there's a lot of candidates out there who could have picked it up. But I would probably go for Joe this afternoon. People may argue with me. People may agree. Well, you can debate it in the pubs around the world and in Sunderland tonight. OK, we are next on SAFC Live on Saturday. Sunderland travel back down to the capital and we are playing Watford at Vicarage Road. You can get your matchday streaming passes for that one right now at safc.com. But for us for this afternoon, we'll see you next time.